Hi guys, welcome to the next part of our space kitty. Um, and we will do the pencil details today. And first of all, I want to thank you so, so, so much for all your feedback, all your comments, all your likes on my videos so far. I really appreciate all your feedback. Um, I will try to set the volume a little bit higher for this one since I got a few comments that the last ones the volume was too low. I hope I can fix this in from now on. <laughs> okay, so let's say we are ready to go. Um, I will mainly use Prismacolor because this is just my go-to pencil. Uh, in case I decide to switch in between for a few polychromos or stuff, I will let you know. Okay, so then let's do this. Mm. I think I will start with the suit. And I will mainly use the French colors, uh, French gray colors, I think. Mm, because I feel that they are the most fitting, like these warmish grays. Mm -hmm. So let's just bring them all out here. And very dark gray. Where is my cool gray 90% okay that's my black and my cool gray these are some pencil extenders I use because these uh, these two are already very little um, I mean I use them but I'm on the hunt for new ones because these these uh, parts that you turn around to tighten it I feel they they loosen a bit at least for me, they don't really hold up that, that good. Okay, so all the French greys, the cool grey, 90% and the black. And then we will see if we need some more stuff. Okay, so... And, of course, none of them were sharpened. Um, I got a few questions also. For me, this is the absolutely best sharpener, the DAL 133. I can't remember if I had any breakage on a Prisma color since I used this thing. Unless, of course, the lead inside the pencil is broken, then this one can't fix it either. But <coughs> since it's not the, the pencil that gets turned around, but uh, this, this sharpener thingy inside goes around your pencil, it lowers the stress on the lead. And especially for Prismas, I felt that this is something that really causes some breakage. So this one is absolutely my go-to sharpener and I use it for every pencil that I have. I don't have another one anymore. So, okay, let's start with 30% after I sharpened it. <laughs> A little bit at least. Don't. Yeah. Okay. So let's start where we started with the markers, I say. Let's say. And I basically just do the same thing as I did with the markers and go from there. Maybe, <coughs> sorry, maybe we can see if we can add a little bit of Tombow marker for the shadows like I usually do later on so that you can see how I use the Tombow markers or any water-based markers basically because I use them all the same way with the same techniques and stuff. Um, if we use Tombos, I will show you how I use them from the palette or how I use them 
directly on the paper. But first we need to get down our, our pencil work and then we can check if we will go to markers also. Right now I'm just following all the colors in the parts that I colored with markers. Again, at this point that's just basically it. Maybe overlap a little bit into the more lighter areas. But I'm not too careful at the moment, as you can tell. Maybe here and there just to add a little bit more of definition. I don't know if I said it's French grey 30%. Not sure if I forgot. And the fact that I laid down a marker base here, as you can see, it saves me a lot of time. Because as loose as I'm using the pencils right now, it would look horrible if there wouldn't be a base, a marker base. So. That's also the reason why I started to use with marker bases, because it, it saves a lot of time, at least for me. And as the thing with the I am stuck on a page or I lose interest in a page is a real thing for me, <laughs> time is really something that matters. So I would say if a page takes me more than a week, I will probably get bored and will have a hard time to finish it, if ever. So here you can see where I forgot the marker base. Here it will take a little bit of more time with the pencil. That's 50%, also French grey. Then we will take 70% for the darker areas, darkest areas. So what do you all think about this book, if you have it? Or if you don't want to, to buy it because maybe it's just not your style or it's too many details or 
Maybe you even don't like the mythographic books, I, although I can't understand, but maybe it is, so what do you think? Or who's your favorite illustrator from the mythographic series? Like I said in my, my completed pages video, Joseph Kettenbank's absolutely my favorite, although Alessandra Fusey did a very good job on this one. So we will see if there's somebody else on my personal pole position <laughs> in terms of mythographic illustrators. I hope she brings out a new one very soon. I think Joseph is bringing a new book in March, March or April, at least in Germany. It's the Aviary. So I guess we will get a few birds, birdie pages. We will see. Yeah, maybe just finish all of it. <laughs> I try to get it a little bit straighter for you guys because usually I would jump, jump all over the place on the page. So I try to get a little bit more of a system and kind of a root over the page. Just so you, know, you don't lose track on what to do now, what to do next. Or what I do, not what to do, but you know you, you get what I mean, right? Okay, so now for the cool gray 90%, although you can't read it anymore, but trust me. <laughs> for the very dark spots, the very dark shadows, we we'll want a little bit of contrast in. Yeah, I think we can use a little bit of Tombow at the end for these crevices and dents. I think just to bring them them out a little bit.
right now. I'm trying to s to look at my page and the screen sim uh, at the same time, just so I can see if it shows up on camera too. That's actually pretty tricky. Maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> at least not if I don't want to turn this kitty cat into a kind of abstract artwork. <laughs> So now I just go over and just try to think where I want some more shadows, some deeper shadows to kind of separate the elements that I want to be a little bit standing out or going back to the, the background a little bit more. But also very, very roughly and It's all fine-tuning at the end. <coughs> just mapping it out, that's just still all I do. Don't think too hard about it. It's funny if, if you, at least for me, <coughs> if I just let my, my hand flow and my brain flow, somehow shadows and stuff fall into their place just just naturally because I feel if you just let your brain decide whatever it wants to do your brain knows what it looks like and it will just do it it will you tell your hands just to do it <laughs> I think that's pretty funny how how brain works sometimes and sometimes how it terribly fails <laughs> in the weirdest situations so whenever you don't want your brain to leave you then it will for sure And also with the with the base, I don't have to think again, because I've already put down the dark color, so there's nothing I can do about this anymore anyway. So just just go for it. <laughs> just follow the things that we've done already. That's your guideline. That's it. If you were happy and satisfied with your base then just stick to it and it will be fine at the end If I'm a little quiet then I apologize, it's still pretty early in the morning and I'm still in the waking up process, kind of. <laughs> so I don't know really what to talk about right now, I hope that's okay for you. Just bear with me. Otherwise just 
turn off the volume or just play some music for you. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Okay, so that's that. Now I go in with... I really like the Derwent drawing Chinese white as a white pencil. I also like the Prismacolor white. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't exactly know which one I would prefer. It's just a taste of the day jump for me if I do Prismacolor white or Derwent drawing Chinese white. That's also very good, very soft pencil. I really like that one. And then just smoothen out some edges here and there and bring the white a little bit back where we maybe went a little bit too gray, brownish here and there because we, we actually want a white appearing helmet and that not just gray, dirty gray and like I said just to smoothen out some some lines from the marker some harsh edges and just just go over all of it pretty much just not in the very darkest areas because I've put the, the dark gray down there for a reason to get it really dark so it wouldn't make much sense to lighten it back up or to smooth it out or so, but in the lighter parts, I just go over quickly with some white pencil. To give it a smooth finish at the end. Because I don't think that I will do that much on the on the helmet and the suit anymore. I already like it pretty much. But I think we will already go into a little bit of tombow here and there because then we have this this big part finished and don't have to go back to it again. So you will see a little bit of tombow marker very soon. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it really smoothens out uh, the edges of the, the marker with the white one, with the white pencil. Although we are, gonna to, we are going to add some of the edges again with, with my, uh, Tombos later on, but for now I just want to smooth it a little bit. And it lightens it up a bit. I felt it looked a little too dark and too gray in some areas although <coughs> sorry although it should be a white suit so that's good that we can lighten it up back a little bit
I hope it's not too too shaky right now because I'm pressing quite hard at the moment so not very light-handed right now <laughs> so if it's shaky I'm sorry I'm almost finished yeah damn it so this can happen if you do this you can smear it a little bit but for me it's just on in this case it's fine I mean in any other case I mm, I think I would just leave it <laughs> and not bother with it too much if I really wanted to be back white again really white so if I smear it into a white area I would maybe cover it with Posca I don't know but only if it should be a really white area where I smushed it in otherwise I will probably just leave it I already uh, I talked to somebody in the past um, it's and we agreed about in this point totally that if you color a page it's not that you're looking at it with your nose on the paper it's always best to uh, take a step back and watch from a little difference and these little little lines these little dots or smooches or whatsoever will absolutely not be that obvi obvious uh, when you look from a distance as they are when you sit right in front of it and just stare at this point where there is maybe a little mistake in the end probably you will be the absolute only person that sees it I mean it's bad for us as an art uh, as an as a colorist as the person who colored it and as the person who knows where the the mistakes are and where the issues were and stuff like this um, but the people you are showing your pages to will never ever realize it so don't be too hard on yourself so these things happen and just just leave them and if you don't tell anybody so there I made a mistake and there is a little smoosh and there is a little spot where it shouldn't be then they will pretty much never ever notice so keep that in mind don't be too hard to yourself it's it's fine okay so let me just grab my tombos and then I will show you where I will or how I start to lay down some shadows with them just one sec okay we're back so here we have them I have the 108 set actually it's a 107 set plus a colorless blender um, I didn't even test them beforehand I just jumped right into the big set and they also took a little bit of a learning curve for me too since I find water-based markers are pretty much one of the hardest media to learn how to use them um, also I thought it wa was a little weird that for markers that are so freaking expensive at least in my case they came with a the empty case like th this this case thingy with a with a lid uh, with this this plastic lid and all the markers were mixed up in a plastic bag and you just have to sort it for yourself into this case it, that was a thing where I was a little bit concerned maybe I got fakes or stuff like I know there are fake Prisma colors out there and and I was a little bit afraid but when they're fake I love them <laughs> I want these fake stand back again um, yeah I have that's the only thing that I thought was a little weird okay so here's my thingy I don't know how to call it right now then let's go to the tombow markers and let's take maybe a little bit of a cooler gray 
like the 75 and for dark one, dark spots 75 and 55 75 and 55 75 and 55 so let's start with these and then we will see how it goes Maybe let's also bring a little bit more of a brownish one, I think. 79. Good. Good, good, good. Also, just in case, let me bring my water brush. Also, where is it? Here. Okay, I use those. Uh, these are from Pentel. Um, they came in a three set. Um, they were not marked correctly, so there are three different sizes, as you can see, hopefully. There's a small one, a big one, and a medium one. I mainly use the medium one, but as you can s see, I wrote on each and every one um, what size it is, because if I have them in my, my little basket, where I store them. I can't tell right away which size it was. So, like I said, the medium one and just... The last time I used it I forgot to put the, the cap on again so it dried out, but it's not that bad. It's okay. Oh, and it looked, looks like I also forgot to clean it properly a little bit. There seem to be a little bit of blue. Yes, so that's better. Okay, all prepared. <laughs> okay, then I think I will even go with the middle darkest gray. Then I will blend it with the lightest one and then maybe come back to the darkest areas later. So, this is a little bit more of a brownish gray, as you can see. Let's just try it and see how it goes. Once again, these are mainly the areas that I already did. At this point, I'm just trying to get in more of definition in this in this step, for me, it's more the definition and the contrast than the actual color. So now I'm not coloring, I'm just, like I said, defining and cleaning up a little bit, so to say. Then I pull it out with the lighter one, here and there. Sometimes I even try to create plotches and streaks just so it looked, looks more used. Like I can imagine you would, your, your space suit will get some bumps and dents when you're in space. Probably. Never been there, uh, but I can imagine. <laughs> Okay, can barely see, but it's fine. And then I use the brush just to drag it out a little bit more even. Pretty sure this will not show up on camera, but it doesn't do too much anyway, so you're not missing on anything here. Okay, so the darkest one just here for the creases where I wanted to appear a little bit more 3D-ish. And also these I will put down as a relatively harsh line. And not smoothen it out too much. Okay. 
just a teeny tiny bit here and there to give it a little bit of depth also here where the darkest shadow would be part, the middle one. This one will probably cast a little bit of shadow down here, so... And since the light shouldn't come from the back, I will also put a shadow a little bit down here. darkest one really dark on the edge then bring it a little up here like I said in the beginning I didn't plan this out I just do what feels natural for me I think that's something that takes maybe a little bit of practice and probably a little bit of practice. And sometimes maybe a little bit of courage and just go for it. Okay, now let's take the middle one again. Let's go back up here. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm putting down quite harsh lines right now. And I will not smooth them out, smoothen them out or again. I will just leave it. I just went over the with the white one to make the alcohol markers a little bit more smooth but right now I'm just working with the actual shadows and most of them I want to be quite crisp that's why I don't smooth them out I mean I could do this with pencils too, I know, but I, it's just a matter of time. It would take me much longer to do these kind of shadows with marker, uh, with markers, with pencils. That's just why I do it with, with the Tombow markers instead of the pencils. It's just faster. I'm lazy, actually. <laughs> In terms of putting down shadows, I'm lazy. Because at this point we went over this whole kitty cat, uh, this is the third time, I think. So, mm, yeah, when I can save, save the time, some time at least, on the single layers, then I will do this. Here should be a dark shadow since it's laying underneath. Okay, a little bit 
here at the bottom. Okay, a little here, just to make them pop a little bit more. Shadow underneath the spaceship. I feel like here should be a shadow too. Yeah, I think that's better. So here. This should cast a little bit of shadow. here. Okay. Oops. Was a little too much, but it's okay. Okay. Let's go to the middle one. I think I want to be this one a little bit further in the back, so therefore the top layer would cast a little bit of shadow again. Down here. Here. Just to separate the parts of the helmet a little bit. And the lightest one. Not too much, just a little. Here and there. I think for the moment this looks good for me. Uh, one sec. Feel I missed this spot in the whole process <laughs> from the first one on. Okay. Okay. <coughs> then let's go down to the suit. Don't be afraid of dark areas. They really can bring your page to life. So, to get dimension and contrast, actually, dark colors are your friend, not your enemy. Ok, 
Okay, just playing around here and there a little bit. Darken up these shadows a little bit more, or a little bit, pretty much, I think. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, the middle grey. But I don't think it will need that much of it down here. Maybe on the shoulders a little, little bit more. And this, this what I'm doing right now, if you use water-based markers, you can also do this on, on uh, double-sided double pages, so because these markers will not bleed through. So this is something that you, that or I use regularly on any kind of, of books. I mean, of course, if you have a book with really thin paper, then you still have to be careful, but otherwise, for example, Kirby Rosanne and um, what else, Hannah Carlson, the paper in these books will be fine. And also, although my, my markers acted weird in the new Rooms of Wonder by Johanna Basford, in the Johanna Basford the uh, paper is good enough so you can use water-based markers there too. At least in my experience. I'm not sure about the different versions in different countries, but I consider myself pretty lucky at this point. Um, when I think about the, the quality of the paper that I got so far in any books. Um, I also have a few books that are printed on these on this this well beloved Amazon uh, paper, but I think it's not that bad. I mean, you know what you get for a book that's about in my case six five six seven euros. I don't expect the the paper to be the best quality, and if I decided to purchase it anyway then I know what I get and I know what I can expect and for me I see it as a kind of a challenge to work with this crappy paper and make something good out of it anyway I, I find it it teaches you how to work with your with what you have also so cheap paper although it's annoying I find that it trains you to realize, okay, what can I do on this? What can I not do on this? Um, for example, I know that these papers will not take that many layers. So I will absolutely for sure go for a base in some sort 
to reduce the amount of pencil work that I have to do on top because I know at one point the paper will just say okay I'm done we're done here I'm fine I don't take any more of this stuff <laughs> and then you're done and then you're sitting there like okay what to do now <laughs> so just find ways to color in as less layers and with as less effort as possible and then uh, you have a chance to get something good out of it at least in my opinion I mean no, don't get me wrong I'm I'm I would go for if I had the, the choice I would probably always go for the better paper but I feel it's very rare that for a specific book you have the option to choose your paper so if you love a book you just have to take it as it is or just don't but if I really fell in, fall in love with a book then I don't care about the paper actually um, I, I care for the paper in terms of the price that I pay for it but not in terms of how I could color on it or if I could not for me it's just really a challenge okay so I think with the shading and gray I'm done I don't want to go any further because then I will really lose the white color of the page uh, of the suit and I don't want to lose it so I'm fine with this um, when we are adding the background later on it will pop out even more and become more white again with a darker or colorful background so at this point I will not put any more gray on it just let's see how it turns out at the end and probably I will even put some highlights even though it's white but we have some grayish areas and there these highlights will show up again. Um, also I will I make sure that I will leave my the the areas there which I did with the tombow markers uh, I leave them to dry really good because Posca pen it's pen it's paint it's uh, wet so it can lift the tombow markers. I mean with the grey ones it's not that bad but for colors like dark blue or dark red, especially red, it will lift up and it will change the color of your your Posca pen. So therefore I will absolutely leave it dry although it doesn't make a huge difference but it does a little bit of difference. At least I want to believe that. <laughs> okay so that's that. So then we will switch gear to the green parts. Just one sec. Okay, back again. Uh, before we go to the greens, uh, I forgot to unpause the video, but I just added this shadow down here too. It just looked weird to me that the, the helmet would cast a shadow here and here but not in the chin area so I just added with the darkest tombow I completed this shading line just just went through th two or three times that's it um, okay and then I searched for my colors for the green parts uh, I will use the white again for the highlights um, the only uh, polychromos that I will use is the dark indigo I really like like this color, um, and it's just a tone that the it doesn't look like the indigo from the Prisma color. That's why I go to this one regularly. And for the greens, I have chartreuse, chartreuse. Um, then we have spring green, apple green, grass green, and peacock green. These are my colors and then let's jump into this one just let me sharpen my spring green okay good so where do we start 
on top. Let's do a top. Once again, very careful not. I don't know yet if I will use all the colors. These are just my colors to choose from, but I'm not completely sure if I use all of them. Just uh, so I don't have to browse to my my uh, case all over all the time. Also, I will, will color all the parts that I may fo have forgotten at this point. Just browse over it again. Look for any parts that I, I forgot, that I missed. So, if I miss some spots in between the layers, I will just add them later on. Probably even with a different medium, like when I miss a spot with a mark in the marker stage, then I will just add it with pencils like I did down here, and then go from there. I will not bring out the the big marker case again just for this little spot. That's it's not that important. You can fix this with a different kind of stuff. Okay, it's spring green, then let's do apple green. I don't think I will use the shot rose. I think. Uh, no, not there. Just here and there. I just want a little bit of variation, but That's enough. Then grass green. I think now we are going to the more darker spots, like here. And I have to smoothen out this, these parts because class cla uh, has some pretty crisp reflections in it, and it's. It's adding to the realistic view or look, I think, if you keep those those crisp reflections there. Just add some more here and there. And I'm just, just adding to it as I think it could look good. I haven't planned this out either, so just doing whatever. Okay. 
would be cool if we are on frame, right? Also... I try to not put my hand in the way too much. <laughs> but if it's not working, then you will have to wait for just for a second to see what I did. Just a little bit over here, and there, and here again. <laughs> and now the jumping over the place begins. Again. Okay. Of course I forgot down here. At least now that I'm recording, I don't have to wing my colors when I forget. I just can watch back what I used. So that's good. A plus. Another one. The darkest green is peacock green. I already pressed pretty hard onto the paper with the last color so at this point it's already hard to get the peacock green to stick but it's okay okay And if you if you've seen with Prisma color I don't work very light handed. It's quite a bit of pressure that I'm working with. I know you should work light handed but ain't nobody got time for that, right? A little bit over here.
then indigo we we have to see if I can get it even to stick because mm, it's very waxy, waxy already but nah nah I think paper's done here so let's try to get some darker areas with bla uh, black and then we will jump on the tombows again and then we call this one finished to these parts because by now I have da put down such a thick and closed uh, wax layer with the prismas that the polish just won't grip on, on it. Prismas will work to a certain point still, but there will be a point where I just have to switch what I'm using from pencil to, to something else to keep it working. Just adjust here and there as I'm going. <laughs> Okay, it's okay down here. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And then white. But I will do some Posca highlights here. Definitely. Ooh. <gasps> snap. Snap, snap. Snap, snap. Snap, snap. Snap, snap. You've seen nothing.
here, over here. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So Posca pen. I have the one millimeter. Actually there is another one um that's this one, the zero point seven millimeter. I like to use those or I prefer those, but this one isn't giving me that much of paint anymore. I need to reorder these. Maybe let's let's shake them anyway both. Maybe we can squeeze a little bit out of it. But <sighs> okay. I mean you can see I hope hope you can see the difference in the nips. I feel this one is way finer. Although you can get fine uh, lines with this one too, but I mean, if you if you look, that's something that confused me. <laughs> I all oh, I mean, they are both 0 0.7. I just realized, but they are different things here. MR and just M. I prefer the just M. So the bullet sh uh, shaped instead of the pin shaped. I like this more. But that's also very very personal, I think. Uh, let's just clean up this a little bit. Because if it's clogged and dirty, the paint will also not run. Maybe can squeeze out, but I can already see that it's not very opaque. So there's just no, no, no. It will not work. Yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> yes, the back of my books always are scribbled like this. Guys, okay, so let's start on top. Can you even see it? I feel the colors are again not completely true. Um, sec. Okay, I will not get it, but I will make a picture at the end and then you can check out on my Instagram <laughs> and decide for yourself if there is a color uh, a difference and then you can tell me which ones you prefer. So I really am now getting what some of you been telling in your videos that the colors are not what they appear to be on camera. I totally get that now. I mean, I got it beforehand too because when you take a picture of it, it's just the same. Sometimes you take a picture and it's just like, what? No, no, that's not how it looks. So. Okay. Just a little here and there, here and there. Just playing around here. Okay. 
think that's good. That's okay. Yep. Okay. That's that. Go down here. Just the edges. A little bit. No, you can't see much right now. <laughs> Just a little bit concentrating here. Looks good to me. Looks enough for me. So then bring in the highlights on these bubbles, buttons don't know what they're supposed to be, but pearls, I don't think they are pearls. But like I said, maybe they are, maybe they are not. <laughs> not sure. Only, only Alessandra could tell us. Also on this one I will just make the line, the outline a little bit thinner on here. Okay, then the big button. Okay, okay, did I miss something? This one I missed a little bit. Okay, these are the green parts. Ah, uh, let's see, let's see. There is still something missing, I think gonna be uh, zero three zero eight zero five okay so now we will go very fancy <laughs> and we'll bring in some very harsh shadows with uh, some fine liners, the the micron pigma micron fine liners, ink liners, 
I have the size 0, 05 and 0, 03. We just have to check if they are working, especially this one likes to die on me and dry on me. <laughs> but we will see how they go. Yeah, it's working, that's fine. I don't know if this... Sh oh, sorry. Sorry if my head was in the way. Um, I don't know if it shows on camera, but for me it just brings in a little more definition again. But that's that could be something right now that's only visible in person. Not sure. We will see afterwards. If it's ab absolutely obvious, then I just forget what I just said. <laughs> and if not, then you at least know what I'm doing here, although you can't see it. But yeah. I feel that the black just makes the pop, uh, makes the green pop a little, even a little bit more. Also, oh, okay, let's, let's, let's make sure not to bring in the head again. These are the things where I on almost touch the paper with the tip of my nose because I'm so close to the paper then. I know it's it's really good for the eyes. Not. You shouldn't do that. But it's just something that happens automatically. <laughs> I can't control it. Is that something that happens to you guys too? Because I can't be the only one, right? That somehow almost crawls into his page. Yes, I like that more. I really hope you can see it, but I feel this this green on camera looks a bit a little bit more muted than it is in reality. It's pretty pretty toxic green over here, but it's not showing very very well, I guess. But it's there, it's there. And like I said, I will try to catch it at least on a picture and then you can check it out on Instagram. Okay, a little bit over here. Okay. Okay. here And a little bit down here. Yeah, no, 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 that doesn't look right. That's a little bit better. Okay, so no, no. One of those buttons I always forget. Don't know what it is. I know they are there. 
I colored them multiple times by now. But somehow they always escape. Okay. Think now I have them all. Nope, I don't. Okay, now I have them all. Yes, the buttons yes, but those little thingies not. Of course. Of course. Hmm. <laughs> now that I have added it, I wanted to do to the helmet too. But with a thicker one. Let's let's take zero eight, also micron. <laughs> and as you see, although I said, oh, this part is finished here and this part is finished there, as soon as I finish another part of the of the page, and get a little bit more contrast in there or use some various stuff in them then I just always go back and just adjust the first parts a little bit so maybe I should start uh, stop saying okay this part is finished because actually until I consider the whole page finished I don't know when an element is finished because I find myself going back so often that, yeah, it's hard to tell. Okay. Here, there. These little dots are somehow disappeared by using the Chinese white pencil, so just bringing them back a little bit. Basically all the lines that I've lightened up a little bit too much. Just bring it back to their blackness. Kind of, sort of. And like I said, these are steps where I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's something that really adds to your page in in reality, in first person. So for me, that's a pretty important stuff also, although it maybe looks so finicky and since you maybe can't tell, it, it appears maybe a little bit useless to you, but trust me, in, in reality, in person, it's absolutely worth the five extra minutes at least for me okay. 
to bring back the definition a bit. Also these very, very dark lines help to separate the elements from each other more when you look at it later on. Like I feel I lost this zipper a little bit. So bring back the zipper and here I haven't used any pencils as you could see. I don't think it needed it. I'm happy with the color of the marker. It's fine. Well, also this one. Okay. Okay. So that's actually the point where I'm so far let me just try to talk over it since until I'm finished with this part um, so far I'm happy with the suit as it looks so we're at the one and a half hour mark right now um, as I since I got the feedback from several people that they would look uh, several parts and they would be happy to see several parts to get all of my progress and how I color um, I will it's pretty much the same parts that we did as we did with the markers um, so this time so now we finished the the cat and the, su uh, the suit and the helmet the cat not um, so, but yes, I mean, that's that's a really big part of the page, so I think that's okay. So I would say I will leave the suit like this. And next part will be all the rest, like we did with the markers. I hope that's okay for you. And I hope you're still not bored by this and keep going, watching and stay with me on this page stick with me on this page and i hope this time the volume is better once again please let me know if i still have to adjust it um and i would say i will see you then all in the next part when we color all these little guys and the kitty cat and then the last part will be the background so see you all in the next one Bye!